This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello, whatever time it is with you and wherever you are. Thank you for downloading this Smackdown review as part of the WWE podcast. As always, it's an absolute pleasure to have you listening along. And thank you so much to everyone for the follows this week on Twitter. For anyone who hasn't done so yet and would like to, please give me a follow. I am at Amanda SD Pod. That's at Amanda SD Pod. Now, guys, this is show number 13 for me today. Unlucky for some, but 13's always been a pretty lucky number for me, so I think this should be a good one. And as Matt's been uh, advertising this week, uh, I am off on my holidays for three weeks, meaning that la- next week, which is the show airing on the 27th of September, will be my last one for three weeks. Um, I'm going on holiday um, to Europe and um, I'm not confident that the Wi-Fi will stand up to me watching and recording a show and I certainly don't want to let you guys or Matt down. Um, So uh, Matt's kindly found a sub to take care of the Smackdown review for the three weeks I'm away. I'm already looking forward to getting back to it. Slightly gutted that I'm going to miss bad blood. Um, I will try um, and uh, and watch it, um, but I've tried to watch uh, PLEs from abroad before. Um, I do have NordVPN, which um, can help me get onto the network from abroad, um, but it really just depends on the local Wi-Fi. So fingers crossed I can at least see bad blood. If not, I will make sure that I'm downloading all the preview and review shows that Matt and the guys will do um, while I'm away so I can keep a track of everything. Um, I have uh, got permission from Matt as well to uh, record uh, a different show for you, obviously wrestling related, um, which I plan to do um, once I'm back from holiday, probably in a couple of weeks after I'm back from my holiday. Uh, I want to do a standalone one-off show reviewing a particular area uh, which hopefully you guys will be interested in but uh, I'll give you a bit more news on that uh, once I'm once I'm back and uh, back and uh, back into the rock and roll of things back here so guys it's not long now till the Vince McMahon documentary airs I think that's the 26th of September which would be next Thursday as I uh, record today I really can't wait to see that and I will endeavor to have watched it by the next time we record Um, so we can uh, have a little bit of opinion on that Um, so if you guys want to watch we can have some interactions on on Twitter that would be fab and what did you guys think of Raw this week I think the highlight for me was the punk promo Uh, I really liked where he just completely changed his tone and the cadence of his voice Um, it felt like we were getting something quite different from him so I'm looking forward to hopefully fingers crossed being able to watch Bad Blood it's shaping up to be uh, pretty awesome. So let's dive in to the review of this week's Smackdown, which aired on 20th of September, and it was from Sacramento in California. So the show, show starts off pre-titles with a reminder of last week's steel cage match between Solo and Cody, including the aftermatch shenanigans with Roman and the New Bloodline. Um, As we're getting that vignette, some of Roman's promo is played over the top, which is a nice touch. And then we get a replay of the whole of Roman's promo, uh, Cody's response, and the challenge laid down by Solo. Finally, we get the contract being signed, and a reminder of the match that's been made, which is obviously Cody teaming with Roman um, against Solo and Jacob for Bad Blood, which should be good. As the show starts properly, we get the new bloodline arriving through what looks like airport security. Um, We get the Tongans going through first, setting off the metal detector and uh, having some beef with the security when they try and pat them down. 
And we get Jacob Fatu coming through, again, setting off the alarm, getting patted down, and then beating up security for having the audacity to pat him down. Um, Cole then tells us that the bloodline have been running riot since their arrival today, and it's because they're embarrassed at what happened last week with Roman Reigns. Um, first match out tonight is the US Championship match. Now, guys, we didn't get any titles here in the UK. Um, did anyone else? I'm not sure um, what happened, whether it was a timing issue or sometimes we missed bits and bobs because of um, different sponsorships and advertising. So, uh, yeah, we went straight into action tonight. No titles at all. So LA Knight comes out to a huge pop, as always. Cole's, Cole tells us that so far Knight's title reign has been a success, which I completely agree with, and it's nice to see um, he's defended so much more often than Logan Paul did already. Um, this is a mid-card championship belt after all so we should get frequent defences and there should be a reasonable about on the TV which there is so uh, I think I'm quite very happy with his reign so far. Uh, we then get Andrade out who definitely doesn't get as big a pop as Knight but is still very well received and we get a quick reminder from the comms team that Andrade got here by beating Carmelo 2-3 um, in their five match series. I wonder if there will be any shenanigans from Carmelo tonight. Um, I love the new graphics, not just the ones that are on the screen, but um, as it was a title match, we had a very close-up 3D um, sort of flyover of the title, um, and it looked pretty cool. Um, as we kick off, and Andrade offers the handshake um, tonight, which he accepts. I'm not sure how this is going to go down. Face versus face can sometimes be a bit disappointing. So we get a very quick start from Andrade, who uh, goes for a cradle, uh, which Knight kicks out of easily. Uh, and then we get Knight going for a quick BFT, but Andrade escapes and we go for a break. Just a word here on the breaks. Felt like for us in the UK, I don't know how the TV coverage works in other areas, but felt like we got many more breaks tonight. Um, I noticed because I was watching on catch up on Sky in the UK here and I did notice that by the time we got to 18 minutes we'd already had two advert breaks which is more than normal so next week I will try and count up exactly how many we have and I wonder if the new TV deal has resulted in the need for more advert breaks or something like that but um, so it, everything felt slightly more fragmented than normal um, this evening. But as we get back from the break, um, we get Andrade has the upper hand, um, but Knight fights back as they trade punches and chops. Andrade hits a crossbody from the top and goes for the cover, but Knight kicks out. And he retains the upper hand as he gets Knight in a headlock, who fights out and floors Andrade with a massive clothesline. The fight goes outside the ring, with Knight smashing Andrade's head off the announce table. Uh, Knight then chucks Andrade back into the ring and hits a slingshot shoulder tackle. Try and say that with a mouthful of wine gums. And goes for the cover. Andrade kicks out in two. Um, and he then manages to turn things around and has Knight on the apron, running Knight face first into the ring post. Andrade goes to the top and hits the moonsault to the outside um, as Knight is taken out and we go for another break. As we get back from the break, Andrade is still in control and Knight is down in the corner. Andrade with some stomps on Knight and goes for double knees, but he misses. Um, Knight tries to hit double knees, but again, uh, Andrade manages to kick out. Knight is now back on top with Andrade back in the corner. Um, Knight hits a neck breaker and goes for another cover. Again, Andrade kicks out uh, and the momentum switches again. And we have Andrade on top. Um, he goes to the top rope and hits his double moonsault, which, as always, is absolutely beautiful. And somehow he manages to connect, even though Knight was a moving target, which is really just phenomenal. Uh, so he hits the moonsault, gets a really close two cover. The crowd shouting, this is awesome, which really it is. It's absolutely a phenomenal match. Uh, Knight catches Andrade mid-move and slams him into the mat, uh, going up to the top, hitting the elbow. He goes for the BFT, 
bat Andrade counters and delivers his spinning back elbow for the pinfall, but Knight kicks out again. Um, Andrade looking for the final message, but fails um, as Knight moves and counters with the BFT. Um, he gets the cover uh, and the pin, retaining um, retaining the US title. Um, I thought, what, what an awesome match this was. I knew it would be good, but sometimes face versus face can disappoint, but this didn't. Um, I honestly don't remember Andrade being this good from his first run. Maybe he was, and I wasn't paying the right kind of attention. Um, but this match was superb, and nice to see the payoff from the best of five series with Camelo ending in something meaningful. I enjoyed the best of five as well, because the quality of the matches was good, but it also made us care about both guys. It allowed them to show the full range of their talent, and sets them both up nicely for a further push. Um, so all in all, a great start to tonight's show. And we get some after match highlights um of the of the match and to be honest it looks even better um in slow motion. So double thumbs up from me. Really good. Uh Cole reminds us that Bad Blood is two weeks away. Blimey Charlie. Is it me or have the PLL PLEs just been flying round this year? Feels like every three or four weeks we've we've had one. Um and they've all been such good quality. Anyway, he reminds us that we don't know who Nia Jax will face for her title, um, and we got to see and we get to see what happened last week with the challenge she made to Bailey and Naomi last week. Um, winner faces Nia, loser leaves SmackDown. Um, we don't know if Bailey covers Tiffany. Does Tiffany leave SmackDown? We don't know that yet. Um, anyway, I'm sure we'll find out. We go backstage where we have Tiffany and Nia. And Tiffy is talking about how they're going to beat the brakes off Bailey and Naomi. Um, and then we get confirmation that if Tiffy gets covered, Nia thinks she will have to leave SmackDown. That's kind of a cool angle. Um, I think a lot could be done with that. So let's see how it plays out. Up next, we are going to have the face-to-face with Cody and Roman in Atlanta, which is obviously Cody's hometown. Um, we will hear their thoughts ahead of the tag match against the Bloodline at Bad Blood. Before that, though, we see Andrade backstage bumping into Carmelo, who starts taking the mickey out of Andrade's loss, and says a phrase I have never heard in my life, which was, put the fries in the bag, bro, you're washed. I have no idea what that means, but it certainly seemed to annoy Andrade, who started punching Carmelo, um, maybe this feud isn't over. Andrade is getting him good before the refs bundle in as always to pull them apart and split them up. So now we go to the face-to-face between Roman and Cody. Uh, this is a very atmospheric video and we get footage of the arrival um, of a um, like a procession of big black cars to the football field. Um, which is, we then find out, Roman's sort of procession. He arrives first, getting out of the middle car, makes his way to the centre of the field, and then we get a single sports car driving its way through the town, making his way to the field, and Cody steps out of the sports car uh, to meet Roman. Roman says, do you see the ground you stand on? Everything you put your eyes on is mine. Years ago, he shed blood, sweat and tears on this field, That means it's his field, as it is his stadium and the city. He asks Cody what he has done for the city. Cody then goes on to name some local landmarks and arenas and said that multiple generations of his family have lived here and bled here. And Roman may have played football here, but this is Cody's home. Roman says, yes, this is your home. Let's cut to the chase and get to the facts. Roman says he has... Roman... Roman says that Cody has everything to lose and is dealing with people who have nothing to lose. He says they took his Jimmy, his wise man, his bloodline and his Unafala. He says for the first time in a long time, he has no weight on his neck, nothing more to lose. Cody says, am I meant to be surprised? He told Roman uh, he would eventually be a chief without a tribe back two WrestleManias ago. 
Cody says, uh, you take a look around WWE, we already have a tribal chief, it's not you. We already have a WWE champion, it's not you. If he can't beat the bloodline, who is he? Cody says, it's just Roman Reigns. This looks to have rattled Roman and asked Cody what he wants. Uh, Cody says he wants Roman's word that he will have his back so that Cody can have his. Roman gives his word but says once this is all done he is taking back what's his. The title I guess but also maybe the bloodline and the tribal chiefdom too. Roman tells Cody he is in his way so Cody moves but Roman says no you're in my way in life. And this was good, um, very cinematic. Felt like a bit of a um, throwback to the pandemic era, and we get a lot. Of, we got a lot of this kind of stuff in empty stadiums for some reason. Um, I still want to know why Cody has agreed to do this, as Roman is right. He has absolutely no genuine reason. I still don't get why Cody would be so helpful to Roman. I know he's a baby face, but there's got to be limits. Um, I really hope in the next two weeks we can tease out a little bit more detail with this, but after the lack of detail that we got for the Cody KO match, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, Don't get me wrong, I have no doubt this will be an awesome match, and it's an important building block in the Bloodline versus Bloodline storyline, but the reason why Cody would be up for this and risk his health, fitness, etc. when he's seen the brutality of the new bloodline. Plus, he's not doing it for one of his mates. He's doing it for Roman. Uh, I just don't get it. So I'm really hoping that we get something. Um, and that Cody gets a chance to explain. Um, or they build it somehow. Um, so we're back to the tonight's action and we go backstage where it looks like KO has been watching the same video package as we have. Uh, He's got a funny look on his face. Um, Byron approaches him for his thoughts with the amount of history um, that KO has with both guys. KO just looks slightly annoyed and walks away. Um, We then see KO uh, looking thoughtful backstage and Cole says he is clearly still in deep thought uh, as there is a lot of history between the three of them so they seem to be rebuilding KO back into this one Um, we then go back to the ring for the next match of the evening where we have Apollo Crews already out no entrance for him again have they recorded over his music I don't know but we haven't had any Apollo Crews proper entrance for weeks now and this is um, after his shock victory over Giovanni Vinci a couple of weeks ago. And it looks like this is the rematch. Out comes Vinci. And this week he doesn't bother with his fancy tracksuit. He's dressed in his trunks, ready to go. Um, so we don't have to worry about him getting stuck in it again. Uh, we get a replay of two weeks ago where Cruz nicked the win. Um, we ring the bell tonight and we're off. Vinci gets the early upper hand, getting Cruz into the corner and literally chopping the hell out of him. Uh, Cruz fights back and the two trade blows. Vinci hits a massive clothesline and has Cruz down, smashing him with kicks and punches. Um, He's repeatedly slamming Cruz against the ropes. But from absolutely nowhere, and I rewound and watched this bit twice, couldn't quite see see how this happened, but from absolutely nowhere, Cruz somehow slips underneath Vinci, countering what looks like it's going to be a power slam, and, and gets a sneaky pin uh, for another win for Apollo Cruz, which means we have to stop calling him Apollo Lose and call him Apollo Cruz. Um, Post match, Vinci takes out his embarrassment on Cruz, beating him down, hitting a brain buster in the ring. Um, he seems quite mad to have lost again to Cruz, and the crowd are booing Vinci loudly. Uh, clearly, we're building to something here. Um, I have to say I'm a little bit surprised again. I thought with all the hype around his return that Vinci was going to come back um, and just run through his first few opponents, but clearly not. Um, And I am glad um, about that. It's different. And for it to be Apollo Crews, um, I think it's good. And and this is set to be uh, a bit of more blooming genius storytelling. And look forward to seeing how this one plays out. But nice to see Apollo Crews being used in something slightly more meaningful. 
We now return to the backstage area where once again Byron approaches KO for his thoughts on the Cody Roman versus Bloodline match. KO says no offence, but if he's going to talk, he will do it in the ring. And Cole calls Byron a pest. <laughs> Um, as we come back from yet another break, uh, Ko makes his entrance to the ring to talk, and he thanks the crowd for their reaction. He says he's aware that a lot of people want to know what he thinks of the situation between Cody and Roman, um, and how it makes him feel after everything that happened after the last few years. Yes, we do. Uh, he's about to tell us, and then Tongaloa Tamatonga with Jacob Fatu come out to massive boos. Uh, Tamatonga says you better let the right hand man speak he says last week Roman Reigns embarrassed the tribal chief and that was a big mistake but he will get what's coming to him at Bad Blood tonight KO will get what's coming to him by order of the real tribal chief Sola Sokoa who isn't here tonight by the way guys no sign of Sola KO says before you start talking again Uh, We all know how this ends, so why not cut to the chase, get in the ring, and let me punch you in the face. Um, Predictably, he is very quickly overcome by the three of them, but DIY come out to make the save and do a great job of clearing the ring. Um, Out comes our GM, Nick Aldous, or Oblivion the Gladiator as we know him. He says he is getting sick and tired of them fighting with no bell ringing um, and makes the match. KO and DIY versus the Bloodline later on tonight. Excellent. Um, That should be a good match. Um, We then go to the backstage area where we see Naomi talking to Bailey um, in the locker room as they prepare for their match. Naomi says that this ends tonight and neither of them will leave SmackDown. Um... We get a bit of back and forth about when I'm champion, you'll get the title shot. And then when I'm champion, we'll have a party and then we'll talk about title shots, etc, etc. They seem to be on the page, the same page as each other, I'd say, ish. But I still think there's plenty of room for manoeuvre there. We're going straight into this match now. So we have Naya making her entrance with Tiffany in tow. Tiffany doesn't get any music this week. She's just a lackey of Naya tonight. Uh, another break <laughs> and then back from that break we get the big entrance from Naomi to a good reaction followed by Bailey who as always gets a great reaction I'll um, tell you what I noticed tonight that Bailey's gone back to her hugger costume she's wearing the macho man type jacket with all the stringy bits on it um, her hair seems to be getting long I wonder if we are going back to the hugger at some point I really really hope not um, but let's see. Um, as they are on the ring apron ready to start, Bailey actually gets stuck in her jacket, um, and Naomi has to help her out of it, which is a good display of teamwork early doors. Um, it's a tornado tag this match, which basically means no tags, and it's just a four woman free for all, really. Um, we kick off quickly Naya and Naomi, Bailey and Tiffany. Um, Naya and Tiffany both get the early uppy upper hand in the early knock-ins but then there's a quick switch Bailey and Naomi doing some great work together to get the beat down on Naya and Tiffy they are actually looking pretty good they pull off a nice double move on both ropes and both cover Naya which is awkward Um, Naya counters and launches launches Naomi basically to space (laughs) as the heels take control as yes you guessed it we go for another break um, as we come back, Bailey has Tiffany outside the ring, throws her into the barricade and follows it with a suicide dive, taking out Naya. Uh, Naomi and Bailey have Tiffy beat in the ring. Bailey goes for the cover, but Naomi pulls her off, um, which causes a bit of a pause in the action. Um, and then takes the bullet from Naya, pushing Bailey out of the way, so it kind of makes amends. Um, all women now back in the ring. Naya gains control, positioning Naomi, Naomi for the Annihilator, but Bailey saves her. And the two attempt to finish uh, on Naya, but Tiffany saves. Um, we get Tiffany and Naomi covered at the same time, but both kick out in two. Um, and the crowd here are 100% behind Bailey, uh, cheering for Bailey. I think they really want to see her get the championship opportunity. Uh, Tiffany takes out Naya by accident with a swanton 
um, Bailey and Naomi hit one D on Tiffy. Uh, Naya is back up with a Samoan drop on Naomi, uh, on Bailey, sorry. And Naomi rushes in with a pin that is very messy and very hard to tell who pins who, but the three count is called. It's not clear at the end which of Naomi or Bailey got the pin. Um, but they definitely got the win as a team. Cole says that we hope to find out later. Uh, Naya looks shocked and Tiffany is profusely apologising, I'm guessing, for the accident or swanton on Naya. This was a decent match. I enjoyed it. Nice to see the woman get some time on the show, um, which we haven't necessarily seen in the last few weeks. And nice to see a very different type of match. You don't see many tornado tags with the women, so that was a lot of fun. Um, we continue to tease the uneasy relationship between Tiffany and Naya. And as expected, the winner um, who gets the pin angle made the match more interesting, as well as the what happens if Tiffy loses, which didn't happen. But still, it uh, it, it made it all much more fun to watch. So all in all, really enjoyable match and let's see who actually won um we then go straight to a vignette of chelsea green she's at a tip and she has a line about taking out the trash she says it's unfair that she is fighting meeting on her own turf which i assume means she thinks meeting lives in a tip um the whole thing is about the dumpster match basically between meeting and chelsea in two weeks um in tennessee so the week before the go home show for bad blood that'll be which um should be fun. I am like that we're getting to see all different kinds of matches, particularly for the women. Really, really good. Um, I hope they don't make Chelsea green just stupid and pink wearing, though, because she is so much more than that. So hopefully they'll move away from that ever so slightly because she is actually pretty badass. Um, we get a look at next week's, week's card and see that we're having uh, Carmelo versus Andrade match number six. Um so that's not an odd number. So assuming that Carmelo is potentially going to win that, and then um, we'll have to see where we go from there. Maybe Decider at Bad Blood, but I'm not sure they're going to add anything more to the card for Bad Blood, but we'll see. We then go backstage with Bailey, Naomi and Nick trying to sort out the messy end to the match earlier. Nick says, you both pinned Naya, so you both have a claim to the title shot, but there can be only one. Um, so the solution will be next week, Naomi versus Bailey, and the winner gets Naya. So that should be good. Naomi and Bailey is always a good match. We've seen it a couple times now. Um, we've seen them work together. They've certainly got chemistry. Um, personally, my heart would like to see Bailey get the win um, to face Naya. But I'm not sure what is going to happen with that. Uh, so let's see. Because obviously we have recently seen Bailey Naya. Anyway, let's uh, let's see where we go there. Uh, so now, guys, we get the main event. K.O. makes his entrance, followed by DIY, whose music hits. But they don't come out. And we go backstage to find them being beaten down by the bloodline pretty badly. Leaving K.O. alone in the ring as they head out. And K.O. faces them up on the ramp. Um... But again, the bloodline quickly get the upper hand um, start to beat down KO, making the numbers game pay. The Street Profits come out to make the save and KO takes out everyone from the top rope. Um, we go to, yes, you guessed it, another break. Um, and the match didn't start yet, but when we come back from the break, the match is underway. So now we have the Street Profits team with KO. And the Profits and KO are in charge. Um... At first, with Ford going for a quick cover, uh, Profit stay in charge, tags in Dawkins with another cover, follow, following a lovely uh, double team move by the Profits, and then we get KO in with the, in from the tag with a, yet another cover, uh, and the crowd are chanting for the OTC. Uh, Tongaloa gets the bloodline back into it, tagging Fatu, who starts a beat down on Ford. Fatu then quickly tags Tonga who hits a move over the top as his entrance into the match. Tonga goes for a cover, um, which is kicked out of and tags back in for two, who hits a massive kick and wipes out Ford. Uh, Fatu follows up with Ford, um, 
but uh, Ford moves, gets a tag to Dawkins, who takes out everyone, but gets caught by a huge, huge kick from Fatu. Uh, and who goes up to the top and hits a moonsault as we go to another break. As we come back, the Bloodline are still in charge. Tonga's in the ring, has Dawkins in a chokehold. Dawkins looks to power out and starts to fire back, fight back, breaking the hold with a fallaway slam on Tonga. Um, but he tags in Fatu once again, who is absolutely brutal. Uh, Dawkins manages to get the, the tag, as does Fatu. Ford hits a crossbody from the top and follows with a big clothesline. And we get some kicks and a standing moose into the cover for a close pin. KO is tagged in and first of all takes out the two on the outside. Um, a run in sent on to Fatu and a splash to Tongaloa. Um, and it's now one on one um, with a cannonball to uh, Tonga. KO goes um, up to the top again. Tonga meets in there and they fight on the top. KO with a huge move from the top with, and a cover, um, which Tonga lower breaks up. KO hits the stunner, but again, the count is broken uh, and the ref rings the bell um, with a DQ as then all hell breaks loose um, with a mass brawl on the outside. The bloodline sets up the announce table. Looks like KO is going through it, but he manages to fight back. Back in the ring, Fatu takes out Ford and the Bloodline return their attention to KO. And now out come DIY, looking uh, very limpy, and very beat down to try and help. Definitely showing signs of their attack earlier. KO continues to get beat down by the Bloodline. DIY are easily dispatched. And then finally we get Cody coming out with the chair, taking out the Bloodline. They turn tail and, and run away. Um... Cody hits the Cody Cutter on Fatu and it looks for a second like KO is going to hit Cody in the back with the chair but uh, he drops it as Cody offers his hand and they hug it out and we go off air with Cody and KO standing in the ring looking strong which makes a nice change from us going off air and the bloodline standing strong. Um, A good show again this week. Lots of storylines progressing and some excellent England action. I was initially annoyed that we didn't get to hear much from KO, um, but I guess his actions uh, speak louder than any words could with the way we finished off tonight. So I guess we know his thoughts on um, the match um, that's been set for Bad Blood. I'm intrigued to see how the Bailey naomi match plays out next week and how we continue the series between Andrade and Camelo. The quality of the wrestling and the storytelling is absolutely top-notch at the moment. So I have very, very few complaints. Um, so all in all, a really strong show. Um, I'm looking forward to how we progress into Bad Blood. So guys, that just about does it for this week's show. Once again, and as always, thank you for having me in your ears. Thank you for your comments and interactions in the week. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a brilliant week. And until next time, remember, be kind. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.